Niombe sote tuwe wima kwa wimbo wa taifa wa Jamhuri ya Kenya na wimbo wa Jumuiya za Afrika Mashariki. Wimbo wa taifa. Fellow Kenyans, I have spoken about swift action of the labor movement and the innovative ventures of the employer in industry. But now I will turn to the unbroken spirit of the worker. I have severally led our nation in celebrating our doctors, our nurses, our clinical officers, and all medical support staff who have worked without tiring for the past 14 months of this pandemic. Their current life of sacrifice and danger is without doubt a true testament that nothing is impossible. And they have taught us that if we put our hearts and minds to the service of others selflessly, we can indeed find our true happiness. To honor the sacrifice made by our health workers, therefore, I believe that we as citizens must exercise continuous civic responsibility. We must not overwhelm our health system by acting irresponsibly and raising the rate of admissions into our hospitals unnecessarily. Let us repay the sacrifice of our workers with civic responsibility. I lead the nation in celebrating our law enforcement and administration officers on this Labor Day also. These are probably the most unappreciated workers, but the most stretched by the COVID pandemic. We as a caring nation have noted their service, their dedication, their sacrifice, and we thank them for it. So indeed, I lead the nation in celebrating the invisible workers of our markets during COVID. They are the invisible suppliers who have kept our nation running in the face of difficult times from the truck drivers who deliver our food from far, to the women in Marigiti who have distributed food continuously from 4 a.m. in the morning, to the border border riders who connect the delivery dots to the digital sellers who make this possible. And I want to thank you all. And fundamentally, I wish to thank every Kenyan whose unsung efforts support our resilience against the challenges that we face today. Fellow Kenyans, let me end with some reflections on our current COVID-19 status as a nation. This ability to step in and fill the gap during times of crisis is not something that is new to the labor movement here in Kenya. We have heard that when the colonizers banned all political parties in the mid-1950s, creating a crisis of political expression the labor movement in Kenya stepped in and continued with the struggle for our independence. It became the funnel for political agitation 
And when the leaders of the independence movement were detained during the emergency period, the trade unionists quickly stepped in and held fort until they were released. Undeniably, it was on the tide created by these acts of selflessness that some of our founding fathers arose. These included Tom Boyer, Clement Lubembe, Arthur Achuodo, Dennis Akumu, Martin Shikuku, Markham Singh, Fred Kubai, Bildad Kagia, and J.D. Kali, amongst many others. However, the effort by our labor movement to offer leadership and pull together the country in times of crisis did not stop in the 1950s. Many may recall that during the post-election violence of 2008, our labor movement was the first one to begin mediation efforts between warring divides. Indeed, their efforts to resolve the crisis had been recorded way before the arrival of the first international mediator. This uncelebrated role of the labor movement in Kenya must be put on record more so their ability to act swiftly in times of crisis. And for that, as a country, we are grateful. Asante sana. Fellow Kenyans I have submitted in the past indicating that a crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic represents also threats, but it also represents opportunity. Some get paralyzed by the hurdles, and they, unfortunately, end up doing nothing but complain. But those who see opportunity in the face of challenges also produce innovations. And because there are no workers without industry, I would like to take mention of two innovative industries during the past 14 months of COVID. The first one is Hella, Hella Clothing Limited. When the COVID pandemic hit our country, this EPZ company quickly discovered the opportunity and switched to the production of PPEs and fa face masks. By rejecting paralysis and embracing innovation, this company saved over 300 workers from joblessness. As Hella Clothing Limited was making this transition, the World Health Organization indi indicated that there was a monthly deficit of 89 million masks globally to fight COVID-19. Faced with this opportunity, Heller was swift to produce 10 million masks during the months of April and May. 